Welcome to the 12th episode of SpaceX in the News. A new week packed full of information has gone by and we're going to dissect it right now. We'll start with Starhopper and its launch pad, then we'll transition into the actual Starship and its engines. We'll mention what's going on with the Falcon Heavy. We'll hit up Mr. Steven and its traveling plans, as well as its fairing catch attempts. And thanks to the comments some of you have left down below, I'm adding a new bonus round, so to speak, at the end of these episodes. I'm calling it Honorable Mentions, and each week we'll cover something different that's not SpaceX related. So make sure you watch to the end of the episode so you don't miss out on this week's bonus content. Let's get started. So let's kick things off with Starhopper. Not a whole lot going on right now, but over the past week, scaffolding has been raised next to the bottom portion of the prototype. No one really knows exactly what it's for. It's been speculated that, you know, a little bit of welding has been going on, maybe a little bit of a cutting work to allow room for some sensors, and we just really don't know at this time. And apparently it's already been taken down. The most likely reason they did away with the lifts and replaced them with scaffolding is just to allow more workers to work alongside the rocket at one time. As far as the top half of Starhopper is concerned, it's still down for the count. Like I said in last week's episode, it's been moved to that open hangar slash tent thing, but just recently those ends are being closed up. The reasoning eludes me. I don't know if it's because it's embarrassing for them and they're trying to hide it. I don't know if it's because maybe they're just paranoid about when now. <laughs> it seems these days that progress is being made at a more advanced pace for the launch pad than it is for Starhopper. Construction crews have been seen putting up more barricades and fencing along the roadway. More ditches are being dug and more cement tanks are seen rolling in. And it seems coyote confusion is also at an all time high. So don't let anyone fool you. Even though Starhopper's nose cone is lying there like a cadaver, things are still rapidly progressing elsewhere. Take for example Starship's engines, the Raptor. We've known for a while now that these engines have been radically designed, but just last night, Elon tweeted out that they're preparing to fire their first one. And they'll produce about 200 metric tons of thrust. Elon making it perfectly clear that they wanna to get to the moon as fast as possible. Maybe to get through the Van Allen belts quicker, I'm not sure. He also said the next version of these engines will be split between vacuum optimized and sea level optimized thrust levels. With these new design changes that allow more power and more efficiency, they had to make these engines a lot bigger, but not in diameter, vertically. And that's important because Elon said he wanted to keep the number of engines for the booster at 31. I mean, obviously the wider your engines are, the less you can fit in a certain diameter. But if you make them taller instead of wider, you can still fit those 31 engines. But he did specify on his first launch that they probably will use less than 31 just in case it blows up. And yes, don't worry, I was quick to correct him on that. But see, it's Friday night when I'm recording this. Raptor's supposed to fire tomorrow, so it's today if you're watching this on the day I upload this video. But we're not done there with the Starship and Super Heavy. Elon also said that they'll probably make the booster legs slash flaps the same as ship instead of like Falcon 9 which is really interesting. This is a pretty big design change for the super heavy booster. So what does that mean exactly? Are we gonna start seeing these rotatable or actuatable fins at the top of the booster? Are the grid fins completely gone now? And is this thing gonna look like a Sidewinder missile with three more fins at the bottom of it? We won't know until Starhopper gets in the air and Elon makes do on his promise to fill us all in on Starship's changes. I've made a few friends at SpaceX and from time to time they tell me some things concerning Starship. Buckle up guys, uh, it's about to get crazy. And while we're on the topic of Starship, I just want to quickly say thank you to all of you who have gone onto the LEGO Ideas website and supported our Starship and Super Heavy build. We are now the number one most popular project on the website, and we are quickly coming up on our first thousand supporters. That's not bad for less than a week, only 9,000 more to go. If you also want to support, it's free. I'll put a link in the description. Go, all right, let's move on to Falcon Heavy. Apparently SpaceX is gearing up to break some records. According to some licenses they filed with the FCC, Falcon Heavy Center Core on this next launch could travel 965 kilometers downrange to land on their drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. That's 300 kilometers more than the Falcon 9 booster's current record. As revealed in previous episodes, the two side boosters have already made their way to Cape Canaveral, and the Center Core was last spotted a few weeks ago in McGregor, Texas, undergoing its static tests. This Falcon Heavy launch is currently scheduled for March 7th. So here's something exciting. Mr. Steven is on his way to the East Coast and on his way out, he attempted another fairing catch. But this time, the front half of the fairing actually landed on the net, but then slipped backwards and fell into the ocean. So close. And yes, I can confirm the entire process of navigating the fairing to Mr. Steven and then controlling Mr. Steven to catch the fairing is all autonomous. But there still is a crew on Mr. Steven as all this is going down. But anyway, once Mr. Steven gets to the East Coast, he'll definitely have a few more attempts at catching fairings over the next few months. 
All right, so we do have dates for the next three SpaceX launches. The first one's taking a lander to the moon on February 19th, followed by the Crew Dragon demo on March 2nd. Hopefully that doesn't get pushed back anymore. And like I said earlier, the next Falcon Heavy will launch on March 7th, placing Arabsat A into Earth orbit. Okay, time for our first round ever of honorable mentions. So I felt that this week's honorable mention should be none other than Blue Origin. They started about the same time as SpaceX and they have been doing incredible work over there. Many of you are well aware that Blue Origin CEO is Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, and they just completed their 10th launch of their new Shepard rocket to space. And yes, this rocket's smaller than the Falcon 9 and that's because it's not meant to go into orbit. It's designed to give civilians a joyride to right above the Kármán line. And having success after success of launching and landing its capsule and booster, Blue Origin has officially revealed that they have developed their capsule and booster that's going to take actual passengers to space for the first time. They are planning to do so by the end of this year. And that's crazy, guys. The first paying program for civilians to get to space. Private citizens have gone to space before by paying big money, but this is an actual system set up to allow people like you and me to go for the small price of probably a few hundred thousand dollars. No, I, I don't know the price. But once you do buy your ticket, I guess the way it kind of works is you go off to this Blue Origin Space Camp kind of thing, do a weekend of training, and then jump in their sweet looking capsule with a bunch of big windows and go to space. You get to experience a few minutes of weightlessness before coming back to Earth and sharing your experience on Instagram. Blue Origin is also in the process of developing New Glenn, which is an orbital rocket, and they just landed Telesat as a customer. So congratulations to Blue Origin. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Godspeed.